Good morning, everybody. I'm determined not to mess up this intro like I did last week when all sorts of things went wrong. So this is the vidIQ live stream, and today it's a thumbnail special. Let's do this. vidIQ. vidIQ. vidIQ.com. And my intro didn't work, but that's okay. We're going to jump into it anyway. My name is Rob. Welcome to the vidIQ live stream. If you are new here, we are the YouTube tool and channel that aims to educate you on your YouTube journey. As always, what we do on a Tuesday is we take a keen, super hot topic in YouTube and then we audit your channels and that's exactly what we're going to do this week as always. But first, before all of this, I have to introduce my legendary co-host who is, let me now get this right, the YouTube expert in residence. He is the gardening geek. He is the skateboard nerd. He is the old guy on YouTube. <laughs> and now a new official title for Jeremy Vessier, the worst shout out person in the world. As he admits himself, Jeremy, how are you today? Welcome to vidIQ. Hey, I'm doing well, as long as you don't make me shout out any names. And that's what we're going to do to kick off the show. Jeremy, you're going to read out the first three names on our guest list today, and then I'll do the rest. All right. Hypo Boy Project, <laughs> Daniel Colobin, and LHI Productions. How's yeah, it going come on, today? folks. That wasn't too bad there from Jeremy. So we're going to say hello to the following people here as well. Imo and Izzy Vlogs. Ashiba, I think, Cavit Vora, Bluescape24, Wall Bouncer, I Crazy Jar, Beauty Conscious, Doing It With Jason, hello to you, Johnny Ray's Digital Nomad Lifestyle, that is the longest username so far, we've also got Ross Sillers, Foul Mouth Fishing, keep it clean in this live stream, please, Gaming Pro Blubbers, Brothers, Nacho Engine, uh, Dime Ricky, Teclin, uh, Book of Ken, Andology, Key Bella, hello to y'all. Jeremy, go and do a couple more. Let's see if we can test you. Get a few more shout outs there. All right, TJ Loves, Nacho Engine, and Ben Marks. All right, so hello to all of you. Welcome to the live stream this week. If you do enjoy what you're seeing here, make sure to give us a thumbs up during this live stream and subscribe to vidIQ if you haven't already done so. And uh, finally, share this live stream with anybody in the world who you think would find it useful to gain some tips and tricks from us. All right, Jeremy, uh, one thing I just want to tell you here is that just before we move into thumbnails, I have upgraded this week my camera once again. I've got rid of a camcorder. I've now installed the DSLR. So folks, if you are regulars to vidIQ, I want you to let me know in the live chat through the wonders of an emoji if you think I look better this week because people have been complaining about how green I look and the fact that I'm out of focus and the fact that the lighting is not very good. But I think I've absolutely nailed it this week. So I want you to let me know in the comments. As you folks are doing that in the comments, Jeremy, I'm going to leave it now somewhat in your capable hands because uh, you are considered a thumbnail guru. You have a Facebook group which is all about uh, mastering thumbnails and uh, foolishly I should have left a, a link in the description for that but Jeremy if you just want to shout it out what's it called the Facebook it's just group? master thumbnails on Facebook master thumbnails so you've got a group that just talks all about thumbnails every single day you've been commissioned by channels to do thumbnails I think from fun is it fun, Funny Nation? God, I can't even say it. What's it yeah, called? Yeah, fun, Funimation. Funimation Animation. is a channel where you're, you, everybody can see all of your hands all over the thumbnails. And so you've got a lot to share about what I call the window to your vin video. People are maybe walking down the street. They're looking at all these shop windows and what attracts their attention. It's that front store window. And if people are attracted by what's on that window, they could go into the store effectively watching your video. That is somewhat of a five-hour out of 10 metaphor I just gave there. Jeremy is much better at doing all of this stuff. So Jeremy, if you just take it away here, you've highlighted 10 points about what should be in a thumbnail and then we're going to look at some good examples. Over to you. Yeah, so instead of just telling you how to make better thumbnails, I've done a checklist for you to ask you 10 questions instead of just telling you what to do. And the first question is, did you shoot a high quality still image? My opinion is instead of just taking a still from the video, actually take a still from the DSLR camera 
it's going to give you a lot more pixels and a lot more room to play with in Photoshop or Canva or PicMonkey so that you can make better thumbnails. The second thing is, are you using the three E's, eyes, excitement, and emotion? So people don't want to click on boring stuff. Eyes being the window to the soul help subconsciously connect people to you and people want to have excitement or fun. They don't want to click on something boring. The third thing is, does your video or excuse me, does your thumbnail tell a visual story? I like to incorporate some type of visual elements to the video thumbnail so that people can immediately within seconds know what your video is about through visual storytelling. Think of this like a comic strip. And then four, does your thumbnail look like your brand? Can people tell that it's your thumbnail from your channel? Or does your thumbnail, every thumbnail on your channel look like different channels? If you don't have consistency, branding, colors, logo shapes, something that keeps you, you, and you don't have some type of cohesive brand, how are people going to know what to click on? If people like you, then they should, you should have a theme or a color or a brand so that people can click on you. All right. The next thing is, is your thumbnail crisper, sharper, and more colorful than your competitors? A lot of people design their thumbnails kind of big. They forget to scale down to like 25% you really need to be looking at what your thumbnail looks like in real size when you're doing editing of, of your video. Basically what happens is the it gets less sharp and the colors get a lot more muddy when it's really small. So I recommend you oversaturate and pump up the colors by 30, 40% and you oversaturate the sharpening by 30 or 40% as well so that when it's really tiny, it still pops. The next thing, is does your thumbnail give someone a reason to click? Is there actually some type of hook or angle or some type of intriguing reason for me to click on it? Um, from arrows to circles to question marks, I mean, there's all kinds of ways to do this, but essentially, does someone have a reason to click on your thumbnail? That's a really important question to ask. Um, and more of a technical thing, you want to align your main core elements to the left because there's a lot of right stuff that overlays. For example, the timestamp code overlays in the bottom right-hand corner. So you don't want to put text there or your logo there, for example. And the eighth thing is, is your text simple and not repeating the title? Essentially what happens is the eye, at least in America, the eye goes to the thumbnail. And then if the thumbnail is good enough, people will actually go to the title. So you don't want to repeat the title. You want to give an intriguing reason to, to stop people in their tracks to see what your video is about. So don't repeat the text of the title. Use that to stop people so that they'll read your title. The next, the ninth thing is make sure you test and look at your click-through rates. Um, so in the new YouTube Analytics Studio Beta, the YouTube Studio Beta, there is something called impressions to views and click-through rates. And you can see the percentage of people that saw your thumbnail versus the people that clicked on your thumbnail and converted to a view. So be looking at these numbers, see what videos are getting the highest click-through rates and constantly test. And the 10th one is kind of my favorite one. Every so often, just get crazy and try stuff that breaks the mold, that pattern disrupts, that, you know, just is completely different to see. It's almost like a governor to see if all the other stuff you've done is good or bad. Um, so sometimes just get weird and, and just test crazy tests. Who knows? Maybe you're, you're on the wrong direction and you're getting a 3% click-through rate when this other direction that you, you maybe need to go on, but you haven't tested it, maybe that's an 8% click-through rate. So that are my t that's my 10 tips. Back to you, Rob. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody just give Jeremy a round of applause there. That's like 
what, six, five, six minutes of absolute <laughs> gold there. If you did appreciate that, let us know by emojis in the comments. So I'm going to give Jeremy a bit of a verbal rest here. And if you want all of those tips, we're going to list them on screen in a few minutes. Uh, so don't worry. I hope you haven't been trying to write all that down. Uh, take a screenshot in a few minutes. What I want to do just before that is that we, Jeremy has been talking about all of these fantastic ideas for thumbnails. We want to show you some of the uh, the pioneers, the leaders in thumbnails, the big channels who are doing this sort of thing. Uh, so Jeremy, now I'm showing on screen, Jeremy can't see my screen in a moment, but we're now looking at Lackland's channel. Uh, this is a gaming channel with over 10 million subscribers. And a lot of, a lot of you are gamers, especially in Fortnite and whatnot. So the thumbnails here, I think as Jeremy can, uh, had said, you have to have thumbnails that really pop and these ones are like really bright, loud com colours and Jeremy often likes to say as well, uh, rainbow vomit, when it's just some really uh, colourful and um, powerful stuff that's going to catch the uh, viewer's attention. They're relatively simple as well, like Jeremy was also saying that when you shrink them down to a certain size, they still uh, tell a story that you can follow. A lot of people uh, make their thumbnails at full screen and, it, and, and assume that everybody else sees the screen the thumbnail at full screen and that just isn't the case and there's also a bit of pa pattern here going on as well like there's a lot of greens and blues that are really strong and uh, the thing that connects them all together I think is that text in like a, a signpost that seems to just sort of connect all of these different thumbnails together and really strong anything more you can add there Jeremy uh, to the what I've said about is Lachlan the all of the text becomes an arrow to, to point towards something. Absolutely, yeah. So it's a doubling up there on, on a couple of strategies. Brilliant. Pretty interesting yeah. strategy, for sure. Yeah. All right, next channel then. Uh, we're trying to sort of jump from genre to genre to give you ideas from different uh, types of videos. Unbox Therapy, if you're a tech enthusiast, I'm sure you've seen uh, this channel. Uh, Jeremy, if you just want to lead a little bit with this one, like what makes these thumbnails so strong? Yeah, a lot of people ask me a lot of the times they don't want to be in their thumbnails because they feel like if they're a tech channel, people are coming to your tech channel to learn about the tech. And they're actually correct. However, they stay and come back to your channel for you. Excellent. So, point, yeah. so the hero, if you're a tech channel, should be the technology. And uh, it, uh, yeah, and, and in this channel, um, uh, there, are, there are two focuses. There's an object and a person, and those are the clear focuses in virtually all of these thumbnails. Uh, but also, like Jeremy says, sometimes um, uh, the video creator here, I've forgotten his name, I think it's Lewis, uh, he uh, is experimenting every once in a while, like this one here. Can you guess the smartphone notch? That doesn't have it, him in at all. Well, that's, like, as you say, Jeremy, like the, almost like the... Um, uh, the, the control test to see if a completely different thumbnail would work. And looking at that one, it got less than a million views, whereas all the other ones seem to get more than a million views. So I think there's a clear example there of where a thumbnail works a little less than others. And we've got the the classic YouTube emotion there. There's, Lewis is obviously looking a bit curious and... Uh, one of the things he likes to do is have him just sort of draw a little bit in the background, but the object in the foreground. But again, because there's only two things on screen, you notice them both. Uh, I think my favourite one, even though it hasn't got the most views, is this one here. The, this gadget does what? With a mannequin with a, what looks to be... I, I, it looks to me like a, a bolt stuck on, on a head and him looking a little curious. I think that's really intriguing and I would click on that one more than any others. But obviously there's a bit of subjective opinion in there. Uh, but yeah, I think... As a channel with 13 million subscribers, they're going to have awesome thumbnails. And finally, uh, Daily Bumps, this family vlogging channel here, Jeremy. Uh, what of what sort of different elements are we seeing here? Again, it looks as if very much the heroes this time are the people in the thumbnails. A lot of people have a uh, are very mistaken about vlogs. Some of the biggest vlog channels I've ever worked with have the biggest misconceptions of vlogging channels. In my opinion, if you really think about all the stuff I've, I've always taught and vidIQ has always taught about thumbnails, um, they have all of these principles. They have the three E's, they have pop, they have you know repetition. They are the heroes um, of this because vlogs are all about the, the actual people and personalities on the channel. So the hero is them and not like a cell phone, but at the same time, Every single one of these 10 rules apply, and I think they do it best. I think they're probably one of the bigger vlog channels, uh, family vlog channels, and I think they do it better than just about anyone. 
All right, so the, a few channels there with millions of subscribers really following the principles of uh, some of the tips that Jeremy has laid down here. But what would we be if we didn't practice what we preach. So Jeremy, uh, when you came up with the idea for today's video, I, I said, okay, Jeremy, you're going to leave with this. I want you to make the thumbnail for uh, our live stream today. Now, I am a Jeremy Vest disciple, I must admit, and many of the thumbnails that you see uh, on vidIQ are like from direct teachings of what Jeremy has helped me with. And I'm sure if you go back to our thumbnails from a year ago, it's night and day, literally, the quality of the thumbnails. But uh, I just wanted Jeremy to tell us the story of what's in this thumbnail that we can see right here. And it is full size, so just try and think of this as uh, like 25% of its size when you see it on uh, YouTube. Jeremy, what's going on here? Well, the first thing that's going on is you told me to do this about 12 minutes before <laughs> we started today. Under, under pressure there, yeah. You managed <laughs> to knot this together in like 10 minutes as well. Um. But honestly, I, so if you look at these 10 rules, uh, did you shoot high quality still images? Yes, they're very high quality. Does the image show close up eyes, emotion, excitement? Yes, we got Especially weird in Jeremy's them. case, it looked like he's ready to eat something now. It's, it's I almost, I'm, it looks like I'm going to eat you, logo. Rob. <laughs> I'm going to bite you in half. Uh, <laughs> does the thumbnail visually tell a story that represents the video? I don't know if we achieved that one. But it, we do show YouTube. Yeah, I, I think, generally speaking, that can be harder to do with right. educational how-to content because I think people want more, more of a uh, thumbnail that does what it says on the tin. So, I, yeah, I, I agree with that. Sometimes we do find that difficult to do. And number four, branding. Yes, this looks like almost every other thumbnail we have. Um, is the thumbnail sharper and pop harder than your competition? Absolutely. If you look right now like full size it kind of looks crazy but yeah. when it's shrunk down really small our eyes and our skin and our teeth everything pops is going to pop two or three times harder because i use some techniques one's called high pass and you can just see how hard this pops and, and none of our competitors are popping this hard yet until they learn they watch this video and <laughs> learn about it but um so one thing I can say about my thumbnails is like full screen, they look crazy, but they're designed to be small. They're not designed to be big. Um, and then six, does the thumbnail give a reason to click? I think so, because thumbnail guide, you know, craziness, I don't know. Um, are your important elements aligned left? Well, we didn't need to in this case. And Rob's shirt's black, so the time code will be fine there. Yeah, yeah. Is the text simple and supportive of a click? I think so. You know, if you're searching for thumbnails 2019 and you saw a thumbnail guide, I think so. Um, are you testing? And yes, we definitely got weird with our expressions here. So I think this is probably eight out of the 10 we, uh, we had accomplished with this one. Yeah, and for regular visitors of vidIQ, we've made some subtle differences, like almost in the last month, like the, the blue background, we've added a bit more punch and uh, lightness to it. And um, that we've changed the font a little bit as well. So we, we, we're testing as well. I think the one thing, Jeremy, that you did not do, and this is sort of partially my fault because I gave you no time to fix it, is we forgot to put the vidIQ branding in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, oh, so man. post live stream, we're going to have to fix that. <laughs> Just so you know that it's from vidIQ. But I think even without the logo, if you set it against 10 of our most recent thumbnails, you'd be able to see the similarities uh, in them. So yeah, good job again from Jeremy. I'm going to give you a round of applause and uh, while we have this fresh in your mind just before we do channel audits and i know some people have been asking are you doing channel audits yes we are doing channel audits in about two minutes and today we're focusing on thumbnails but uh jeremy's gone through a lot of valuable information here so i wanted to make sure that you had a chance to see it so folks Take a screenshot right now if you want to, to get this information down and use it as your checklist. Number one, did you shoot high quality still images outside of a video? Does the image show close up eyes, emotion and excitement when possible? So this is if you or a human is in the thumbnail. Does the thumbnail visually tell a story that represents the video? So complementing the title, a tease, then uh, when the person goes into the video, did that thumbnail deliver on the promised value? Number four, does every thumbnail look like your brand? Can people tell it's from your channel? Are they repeatable elements? 
Number five, is the thumbnail more colourful, sharper and pop harder than your competitors? You look down the right hand side on suggested videos and see which thumbnails stop at, uh, pop, um, really pop. Those are the ones which stand out. Number six, does the thumbnail give a reason to click? Is it more intriguing than the other similar thumbnails that show up in suggested? Number seven, are, you, are your important elements left aligned? Sometimes YouTube adds timestamps as we talked about. If you go on to YouTube now and see the live stream thumbnail for this, you'll see, well actually it won't have a timestamp, it'll have, I think it'll have a live uh, element on the right hand side. Uh, number eight, is the text simple and supportive of a click, not repeat the title? Generally speaking, try and keep your word limit to, what, three or four? Would that be sound advice there, Jeremy? No more than three or four? Yeah. And, yeah, don't just repeat your title. Uh, are you testing often and looking at the click-through rate and keeping and getting better every week? Something we've talked about before. People, and people are asking this in the comments as well. What is good click-through rate? The average is 2 to 10%. Our advice, ignore that. Check what your click-through rate is now and aim to improve on it. If it's 2.5%, try and get it to 4%. And also a final point. If you have a video that blows up, don't be alarmed if your thumbnail uh, click-through rate plummets because that's a good sign. If YouTube is promoting your content to lots of people, not that many people are going to be invested in it, but those who click will help you with views. You want your thumbnails to be seen by a million people and clicked on by 10,000 people versus your thumbnail being shared amongst 5,000 people and uh, 1,000 people clicking on it. You might get a high click-through rate, but it's just not being shared that well. And um, what am I on now? Number 10. Do, do you get weird ever so often? That sounds really strange when I read that out. <laughs> Pattern interrupts can win as well. We've experimented with this as well. I mean, our usual thumbnails are big, bright, and blue, but I've tried a couple which are just white, plain, like, and a subscribe button with the number... Um, number um, hidden and that did really poorly so I know I need to never do that sort of thumbnail again so there we are folks that is our thumbnail the ultimate thumbnail guide we do hope that is helpful for you and now it's over to you folks. We want to do a thumbnail audit special. We've already loaded up plenty of channels to take a look at what uh, your thumbnails are like and try and give you some feedback on those. Uh, as usual, here is a checklist of how our audits work. We have a form in the video description of this uh, live stream. If you fill it out, uh, I will check through this uh, uh, form at some point during this live stream and we will add more channels to it. So if you haven't already done so, do it now. Do not ask for a channel audit review in the chat for two reasons. First of all, it just clogs up the chat and we are not looking at the chat because we don't have time. We're too busy. That's why we have a form. Super chats uh, are, while very welcomed, uh, do not guarantee you a audit because we don't want to put a financial barrier on how we do channel audits. And Jeremy, you're always best at describing this next one, which is apologies if we can't fit you in. And why is that? Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons I made this checklist for you guys on our thumbnail audits is I wanted to make sure that you can empower yourselves. The reality is, yeah. I don't know how many submissions we've already had, but I'm guessing we usually get between 100 and 200 submissions every week for channel audits, and yeah. there's two of us. So we just cannot, it's not personal. It doesn't matter what country you come from. We just can't service all of you. So our hope and our dream for you is to learn from each one of these audits because 90% of the stuff we say applies to all of you. Absolutely, yeah. And the final point is, of course, uh, we are looking at your channel's usually for the first time in our entire lives. So it's based off of first impressions. Sometimes we may get a little bit of information wrong or we may misinterpret something, but you have to realize that we are, I guess, the higher level of the average viewer. If we can't work out what your channel is about or if we think there's somebody wrong, uh, something's wrong, that could be exaggerated by a viewer. And one final thing, of course, which I will not forget to do this week is if we cannot give you a channel audit, we have We've got our own, get this Jeremy, 24-7 YouTube expert on hand to help you if you download the Chrome extension. Uh, you will see a channel audit button to the left here on most YouTube pages and it will give you a breakdown of your channel, like what you're doing well, what you're not doing well. It is, as Jeremy loves to tell everybody, the most powerful uh, tool, a video marketing tool in the world and I happen to agree with him here because just look at all this. 
all of this information uh, like it can take uh, a while to just digest and yeah uh, we uh, this can give you more information than we than we could give you uh, in a five minute audit with all that being said jeremy vest are you ready for the best audit I'm sorry, I'm pressing buttons here, trying to get everything to disappear <laughs> off screen. Are you ready for the best channel audit team and service in the business as quoted by me now? I don't know if that's verified or not, but yeah, Jeremy, you're ready, aren't you? Yeah, I just verified that for <laughs> you. Jeremy so. just verified it. Thank you very much for uh, independent verification there. <laughs> All right, so here we go. The first channel we are going to look at today, Jeremy, I'm just fixing stuff for you. Can you see my screen? Yep. Yes, you can. The transition is on. Now we are going to look at... Da, 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 da. Just waiting for it to finish. Okay, the first channel we are looking at is Tech No Reason. So, what can we make initially from these thumbnails? And if you want to offer your own opinions from the tips Jeremy has suggested uh, throughout the beginning of this live stream, do let us know. So, I, I'm, I think we should sort of pick uh, things out here and there, Jeremy. So, the first thing I'm going to say is that I think there's a, a lack of consistency here between the thumbnails. I'm not really seeing a, a pattern between them and... While there is some experimentation, I think there's maybe a bit too much experimentation departing from a consistent level of thumbnails like this one here, a video you didn't know you needed in your life versus this one with I think Japseptikai and then this one here with just a big picture of somebody's face. I'm not sure where the connections are there. Uh, what would you pick out one thing from these thumbnails? Yeah, I think the rule number four, branding, consistency is probably the biggest area of improvement. And then the second biggest would be the three E's. Make sure even with um, with video games and, you know, animation, yeah. uh, the eye concept is still applies for sure. So make sure the faces are bigger. There's more expression and emotion, even with animation. And I think this, um, this set of thumbnails also um, needs to subscribe to the rule of like shrink down your thumbnails before you um, publish them. This one, for example, the, the salmon run, it looks like for a Splatoon. I, I, after using the magnifying glass, I can see a couple of what looks to be salmon, but when I move my magnifying glass away, there's just too much going on there, isn't there? There, need, there needs to be less characters on there and a focus on the ones that are important for the particular video. Uh, anything else that we can see here? Yeah, I think generally it's just a lack of consistency, isn't it? But we're not seeing a, a pattern going on in those in this channel. Yeah, go through those ten rules, and we'd love to see what you come up with. Yeah. All right. So that's all. As I say, that is what we're focusing on this week. We're looking at thumbnails. That's the most important thing uh, for getting people to click on your videos, along with the title as well. Next channel we're going to look at here is info teasers. Now. I think the one thing I'm going to say about these thumbnails is as a collection, within 10 seconds, you know what this channel's about. And it is uh, this kind of spot the difference game and trivia and like these old fashioned classic um, concepts of, I guess, mental uh, diversion. Oh, uh, and it's put into video format. So each one of these is like, find the odd one out. And you can almost play the game within the thumbnail. And is that intriguing enough to actually click on the video itself? I know there's some very successful videos, that uh, channels that do this. Um, so yeah, I mean, Jeremy, what, el what else would you add here? I would just say mind blown. I have no idea about this one. It would be really interesting if they could tell us uh, in the comments what their average click-through rates were. Yeah. Um, I guess if someone is odd one out, if you know, if if someone is looking for these types of games, I would imagine the click-through rate is really high. Yeah. If people don't know what this thumbnail is, I personally am not convinced that I would know just like scrolling through stuff and then just seeing one of these on the right hand side. I'm not a hundred percent sure that I would know it's which one's not like the other type game. Um, I would just think it was some goofy background. Um, so I guess if a lot of your traffic is coming from you being associated with these types of games, it might be really In high. Yeah, I'm um, just, uh, so I'm just going to look at one uh, and like see how 
those thumbnails pop out on the right hand side so you can see here uh, how that potentially works like this video here with quiz up 300,000 views and it's like find the odd emoji out that's kind of what it looks like on the right hand side and I would say this video really knows its uh, core focus because all of the suggested ones are very similar puzzle type videos as well now, one thing I'll say, if you scroll down a little bit and to the, uh, yeah, to the SpongeBob SquarePants one, my idea was actually to take two or three or four tops and then mm. show one that's different. So it's more like the SpongeBob one here. So it's ah, bigger. I see what you mean. Good, yeah, good. And this one has 8 million views as well. So that, my suggestion would be to take two, one that's normal and one that's different and then do it like the SpongeBob one here. And I honestly believe it's going to be a heck of a lot more clickable. Very, very good point there, Jeremy. I like that. I like that. So uh, I hope you found that. I mean, that one simple change could make such a dramatic impact on your thumbnails info teaser. But I think generally you've got the, the channel focus, right? And I, we see like there's a lot of consistency here going on. So I, I mean, could is there a way that we could make these images pop more or like change the background and so on? A couple of extra things to think about there. Uh, but I would also say as well, Jeremy, that the fact that they use usually use consistent fonts and like the, the spot the odd one out here, even though it is a, a bit of text, I think it's necessary for this um, type of thumbnail. And it's yeah, the, the only thing I don't know is what words are people using to find these. Yeah. I'm but, not yeah, sure it's the yeah. odd one out. So, you know, I, I, I guess I would make sure that you really understand and study what keywords people are searching for these types of games, um, because that would be the, the hugest difference of building your channel. Next channel we're going to look at here. I'll let you lead on this one first, Jeremy. Beauty Conscious, 55,000 subscribers, so a larger channel, which is awesome to see. Welcome to vidIQ. Uh, what can we see from these thumbnails generally? I really like the thumbnails individually, but together I, I feel like there's not a lot of cohesion. Like mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I looked at the top one on the left versus the bottom one on the left that I would know it was from the same channel because the topography and the, the treatment of the text is different. Um, I would like to see the text basically being the exact same topography and treatment on every one yeah. uh, with different words. So, so just, then, an ex just an example here, yeah. that weight loss powder versus dark neck remedy. Right. They almost look as if they're uh, uh, from different channels, don't they? they so maybe like the circle is your brand or yeah. a box or. Oh, hello, Jeremy. Are you still there? I think I may have lost Jeremy temporarily. He may have gone. Oh, I think my entire internet is gone. Hello? Hello? Are we still here? I think we're still here. Jeremy, are you back? I can hear you. Yeah, sorry. Okay, I think that may have been my internet that just briefly drops. You were saying about the... Um, well, the, what I was going to say is, folks, let's give this video creator some help here. Of the 15 thumbnails that you can see, and they all have very different fonts. Which do you think would be the best one for branding their channel? Me personally, I think I like this one here, the skin whitening secret soap. What about you, Jeremy? That's Who's my favorite one as well. I, yeah. I think like just the topography there's really cool and the reveal behind the text looks really nice. It's also yeah. really clean. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I would say is keep all of the text like the same treatment, but then boost those colors. I want to see that watch really blue and I want to see the blues bluer um, and then over sharpen this picture so that when it's this small, it's going to pop harder than everyone else. Yeah, I wanted to focus on this middle one here, which is talking about amazing hacks for nails. So you're telling us that the, the most important thing here is the uh, the nails, uh, but the thumbnail really does a bad service of trying to promote that because the picture's overexposed. I can barely see anything on the nails. So I think that's where you've really got to think about if I'm going to talk about something specifically and make sure that it's really powerful in a thumbnail, that thumbnail has to deliver. And I think that's a good example of where it's so important to get that thumbnail right. Uh, because I think it does a disservice to probably the, the value. Can you the type in? Inside. Can you type in nail design real quick? I want to just show how yes, can. important this is. Jeremy is going on a YouTube search journey. Really, he always likes okay. to do. And yeah, boom! This yeah. is yeah. what that thumbnail should have looked like. Absolutely. So, like the third, the first one or the third one down. 
Wow, look at them nails. That, that's, that's creepy. Terrifying. Uh, anyway, back to our channel audits. The next channel we're going to look at, and I hope you found that uh, helpful, beauty conscious. The next channel we are going to look at is another gaming one. It's Super Andrew 64 and I think this is a channel, a game which, as a gaming channel, maybe lacks a little bit of consistency. I think that's probably not helped by the number of topics you're jumping between on different games. So we've got one on Smash Brothers, NHL 19 Goalie, Pikachu, uh, Smash Brothers. So there's all sorts of different games going on, which means that the thumbnails are going to be difficult to uh, make consistent as well. Again, a good example of where a thumbnail, when shrunk down, loses its impact. This NHL NHL goalie one, the the essentially the hero of the thumbnail is a tiny little blue dot in the centre. You want to really blow that up so the goalie almost fits the thumb, fits the whole thumbnail there. And then maybe some colour issues as well. We've got yellows in one, blacks in others, blues. Here's always a challenge for you. If you took these three or four of these thumbnails and then mix them up with another set of channels thumbnails, would you be able to pick yours out? And the answer is probably not. They're, prob not. They're far too removed from each other. Any other thoughts there, Jeremy, on the thumbnails? Or you, you, you nailed it. Yeah. And I guess one more thing is, just looking at the channel banner, the channel banner has a really good sort of visual core to it. Why does that not transition itself into the thumbnail? So that's something else I would look at as well. Saying that, congratulations on 5,000 subscribers. And there are some videos that do well, the Pokemon ones seem to be, so maybe that's kind of your channel focus. Oh, and just one last thing. This one here, the Super Mario Brothers one, I cannot pick out a single visual element from this thumbnail with the exception of the title of the game. Everything else is just a blur because, as you say, as we say, when you shrink it down, You've only got to have two or three visual elements for it to be powerful. Wow, I'm liking that we're able to reinforce some of the, so many of the things that we've just talked about here, Jeremy. And I'll let you lead on this one. This is Jason Plays. Uh, Pre-congratulations on 3,000 subscribers. What can we see here? Visually? Yeah, I, I love the thumbnails. I'm a, I'm a fan. <clears throat> the only thing I would say is maybe you have a different color for each type of game, which is actually a pretty cool idea. However, I think you're, you know, if you're trying to develop a brand so people know you, I would, I would stick to one color, even okay. though it's different games. The reason for that is people, this is really more about you and your reviews of the games um, or whatever you're doing on these games than, you know, a brand for each game. You're not going to be able to subconsciously rebrand colored for games right so instead just try to focus on one color and one brand um the actual numbers probably don't matter either because people really don't know what they are i would wait yeah. i would spend that time in other places like i was gonna a say logo replace, or a face. Re yeah replace a number um with a logo or a some something that does connect all of the channels together or yeah. their face right like yeah. maybe have their face there yeah, so um, a lot but of individually, the thumbnails are phenomenal. You have um, probably seven or eight of my 10 rules. You have yeah. eyes, emotion, excitement. You know, your colors are really crisp and sharp. You, you've done a phenomenal job individually, but together it's not cohesive. I, I would say there are one or two thumbnails that maybe let it down a little bit. These No Man's Sky ones, for example, these look a bit bland, and I'm not really sure what the 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 draw is but yeah like when there's a character in the game uh resident evil ones uh in particular that's where we're getting uh more of a reason to click because of the the the, the faces on there next channel is going to be angel of groove uh you have 40 subscribers and these are your thumbnails uh, are you a relatively new channel? I think you are. So we're going to give you a little bit of um, leeway here. Well, you started a year ago, but it looks as if you just got up back into YouTubing two weeks ago. So I don't know whether we discard the all the thumbnails and just look at these three here. Uh, learning to learning the fretboard, Skype guitar lesson, and then best for beginners. I think you're still trying to find out what your um, your consistency is and your pattern is but I, I like that these thumbnails kind of have a bit of a tease in them when you're just seeing the 
Sorry, I know nothing about music. What's that called? The stem of a guitar? The the fretboard? <laughs> I don't know. But nobody's helping out, <laughs> out here, so I'm just going to carry on. I love this thumbnail here about... Um, it looks to be a, an audio mixer interface. It's really f- zoomed in, big picture of the the hero of the um, product. Again, Jerry may, may be asking a question here. Should you be in the thumbnail itself? Um, not much to go on here, Jerry. But I think there's in these three thumbnails here. I think they're all they all have their merits. I think they just need to be tweaked on a little bit more. Yeah, I really examples. like the learning the fretboard. Yeah, I, I think yeah. the fretboard is the hero. So even if there was a picture of a face there, it would be it wouldn't be it would be the secondary uh, focus or third because the, maybe the text is most important. Um, but I think you have a lot of fundamental great ideas. I would cohesively tie them all together and add your face when possible. And thank you for people in the comments who are helping me out. It is simply the neck of a guitar. So I was trying to overcomplicate things there. All right. Next channel is Doing Exploring. Jeremy, what do you think about this one? Again, a relatively new channel, only three months old. A few videos. A bit of PewDiePie stuff in there as well. Yeah, I I think, again, go back and look at my 10 rules and uh our 10 rules and get get these things more consistent make your faces bigger less text uh bolder text when you do have text and um focus your channel on basically one or two things right now you're all over the place which is awesome because you're looks like you're a newer channel but at the same time the more you focus and have a niche the more likely people will be able to find you yeah, it's almost like this channel is at stage one of all of the 10 tips that you've suggested, Jeremy. They're sort of bringing in a lot of these elements, but they just haven't quite nailed them right. And just as an example here, we've got some PewDiePie versus T-Series ones. That's good. Try and find out what is the most important element on these uh, screenshots and, and make them the the thing that stands out in the uh, in the thumbnail. So best of luck there with uh, doing exploring uh, with your channel. What we're going to do right now, folks, is that you've probably filled out a lot more forms in our audits. Let's see where we are. We've got 76 channels waiting to be audited. So I'm going to add some more uh, in this short intermission. So Jeremy, unfortunately, as always, you are on Radio Silence during this break. But when we come back, we'll be taking a look at a lot more of your channels. Stay tuned couple of minutes. Does running a YouTube channel sometimes make you feel dazed and confused? Well, that's why you might need a little education. VidIQ can review your channel in seconds, 24 hours a day. It's like having your own YouTube consultant giving you all of this information. Do a YouTube search and we'll show you the stats, the value of that keyword, what's related, what's trending, what tags each video uses, and a deep dive with a single click. After research comes analysis. Our video scorecard will pick apart all the important analytics from social media to SEO, and we do this for every single video on YouTube for free. And when it comes to uploading your videos, vidIQ is here to support you every step of the way with suggested keywords, our SEO score ranking, upload checklist, and recommended tags, boosting your content to the next level. Oh, and if you think we've finished there, we haven't even started. We have dozens more tools we want to show you right now. All you need to do is download vidIQ now and let us help educate you on your YouTube journey today.
All right, then. Leron is telling me that apparently we were stuck on a screen. We weren't actually stuck on a screen. I was just making sure that I got enough videos, uh, channels loaded up in the background. But welcome back to everybody. Uh, Jeremy, welcome back. Just say something so we make sure that we can hear you. Hey, how's it going? Yes, we can still hear you. That's awesome to hear. Right, folks, what we're going to do now is audit a couple more channels, thumbnails specifically, and then we're going to take your thumbnail specific questions uh, very soon. So, Jeremy, you can still see my screen, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So the next channel we are going to look at here is TKHD, a uh, relatively small channel with 26 subscribers, just started, and I think already they are on the thumbnail game. What do you think? I think they're doing great. The only thing I would say is just increase the size of your face about 35%. Yeah. And honestly, I think it makes sense because it is very repetitive, even though the colors aren't repetitive because you're celebrating the flags of each country or what, whatever that is. So I say increase the size of your face. You got the YouTuber face, you got the three E's, you got, you got everything going on. Just really increase that size of your face. And I think you're going to be good. Yeah, I think the one thing to maybe talk about here is that the 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 thumbnail itself is quite busy and colourful. I think there's not many, I guess, different objects in there. So you can, like, as you can see, you can see the Brazilian flag here. I think this is FIFA 19 card game um, from what I can understand. So I think there needs to be a way to maybe separate the, um, the, the hero and the the screenshot essentially so there might need to be maybe like a little bit of a blurring or putting a drop shadow or a stroke effect that something ju that just clearly demarcates the two things there is a would you agree with that do you know where i'm going with that sort of thing uh, the, the reason i say is yes the person is um sometimes a little too small but also i think this one here for example he falls a little bit into the background because of the similar colors yeah, I think so, but I also wonder if yeah, maybe maybe a stroke or something um around the face to offset it. But I I also believe that if he was like twice as big there, it would probably work itself yeah. out. I'm not sure. Okay. But as a new channel, uh, TKHD, already some really strong thumbnails there and I, I think we can clearly see what your channel focus is as well, which is brilliant. <laughs> Excuse me. Next channel, Jeremy. I'll let you take this one first. It is Mogu Mag. I think that's how we pronounce it. What about these thumbnails? Yeah, I I, I don't think the numbers are very important. Um, just because they're not going to show up like the way you want them to anymore. Um, also, I think that fundamentally they're dark. Yeah, very very yeah. dark. It's yeah. number seven is pretty good, but the rest are just really dark to see. Um, I think that's an excellent point here, just showing how it, just a subtle variation in the colors used in this foreground figure can really change how a thumbnail looks low overall. Like these ones here with the silver armor, it's a relatively dark shade of the color and that's blending with the background a bit too much. Yeah, so all in all, I would make the faces bigger, have more consistency. And right now I just think it's, kind of dark like people may not be able to see what's going on with the smaller thumbnail all right so i hope you found that useful and magu mag and one final question you've hidden your subscriber count why have you done that a lot of people will be asking that question when they visit your channel next one here is a uh, roomies diy projects uh, let's see what this channel is about Seems to be maybe car DIY, although I'm not entirely sure. I think this is a, a good example of tip number one, Jeremy, here, where the video creator has taken a still frame from their video. And that means that it just doesn't quite have that punch in the final thumbnail. You try to add some text here, and there's a bit of consistency here. Uh, but this, this one here, for example, this... Um, Easy fix for a Kenmore dishwasher spray. Even when I zoom in, I'm trying to work out what is the easy fix here. You have your hand over, I think, like the bottom drum. And there is like a spanner in there, but it's so small that I wouldn't be able to pick it out. 
it's like you're you're going in the right direction, but you just haven't quite nailed how to tell that visual story uh, in the thumbnails. Would you be in agreement there, Jeremy? Or is a yeah, I doing mean, a bit of a for, disservice here for this one. I would I would zoom in just the hand and what he's doing with the hand. Yeah, like that l small little box would be the entire thumbnail, and then DIY easy fix would be probably twice the size it is now because it's even when you zoom in the text is so small yeah uh but in saying that uh from your older videos uh where, uh, where there was sort of no real attempt to create a custom thumbnail i think there is some improvement going on here certainly in the last couple of videos and i think what, what one final thing i should say is uh let's see more videos from you because you've only done three videos in the last uh the last year and this Kenmore one was successful. So is there any way you could double down on a, on, on a, or maybe just improve a thumbnail because it seems as if this is a quite popular one. Just improving the thumbnail may inc increase the click-through rate without actually having to create a new video. Jeremy, I'll let you lead on this one, which is Just Stupid Games. 500 subscribers. Some strong visuals here, apart from this thumbnail here. Uh, <laughs> that one needs to be changed immediately. But what about the other ones? Yeah, I, I actually like I like it all in all. I, again, I would I would keep to a consistent color instead of purple and blue and red. I would keep to one color in your games. Also, um, even the text on the game. So, for example, if if I'm going to show some old school game, I would have actually shown a scene from the game, like yeah, fighting. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, not the startup screen because. Yeah. It, I can't see it. So I would take the still shots from like actually fighting or doing something um, on the game. Or, you know, if you're showing Mario Brothers, make it a lot bigger so people can understand it's that game you're talking about. And then keeping, I do like having an old school controller as the theme. Yeah, that that's kind of like the, the consistency and the retro I love it. That, that brings everything together. I do like that. Obviously, some more tweaks can be done on that, but I think there's a, a good a good template there. And and the fonts, the they're they're not yeah. uh, contrasting enough. Keep the same font every time. Make it sure it's bold. Um, and yeah, never put like blues on reds. Blue on reds yeah, you know what you want to have more contrast. What is that tool that you we've suggested before? It's the Adobe Co Adobe, Adobe Color. Adobe Color. Um, and it gives you like a wheel and you choose a color and then it shows you which of the best offsets, like the ones that contrast best. Um, so do check that out. Next one is uh, Ewan Smith Music. Uh, again, a relatively new channel, 33 subscribers. And um, wow. So here's a good example of when you have absolute consistency. If you look at all of these thumbnails, you know that it's from the same video creator every single time because it's the same color font. Uh, we've got that consistency of like the a hero on the right hand side, a similar color background. There's a lot of awesome uh, elements here. But at the same time, Jeremy, I think there's some areas that need to be improved. And I think we'd start with too much text. Yeah, for sure. Even though it is good, uh, the design is good. Uh, you know, you're already hitting six or seven of the 10 points here for sure. Yeah. Um, but basically on, on point eight, is the text simple and supportive of a click, not a repeat of the title? That's where I would say, for example, make music may not actually be needed um, mm -hmm, or maybe yeah. it's the only thing that's needed. I'm not sure yeah. there. Um, but how to write the winning song for Eurovision in 2019. Um, maybe you, you should say something like write winning song. Yeah. You know, I, I, I was just looking at this one down here, which is probably... I think this thumbnail has more text than is actually possible in a um, video title. Looks like <laughs> it's got more than 100 characters. So the question here is, how could we simplify this? And my thoughts would be, you make the, sa the Santa with the ukulele full screen and maybe just a single word like in C major or, uh, well, uh, much less text. Because we know it's Santa Claus or it could be coming to town as the text. But as you have visual elements, it's... I mean, this is like an extreme version of not only are you regurgitating the text, but you're also trying to 
tell the story of a text, uh, tell the story of a thumbnail imagery in the text on the thumbnail as well. It's just complete overkill, I think, in that area. So this feels like there's a channel where almost everything's right, but the one thing you've got to do, simplify, would make a huge impact on how powerful these thumbnails could be. You can also make the faces and the actual visual elements within your thumbnails, you know, almost twice as big if you if you slow down the text. Yeah. And that's going to also make the emotion and everything else twice as clickable. Yeah. So just looking at your whole thumbnail uh, collection here, uh, you and I think you need to let go of the text and embrace the imagery. <laughs> I don't know how in, how poetic that was, but I hope. I imagine helps. you meditating right now when you said that. <laughs> uh, next channel, uh, Jacoby Sims. Uh, Jeremy, I think you're leading on this one. Three hundred subscribers. Uh, All right. So, love the faces. You know the expressions, the emotion, the eyes. I think you definitely have that down. Um, what I would work on is I would work on some type of theme or color so that you pop. And I would work on basically developing a template for topography and text. Um, keep the, you know, have less text. Uh, for example, the first one, college vlog, I can read that. Basically, besides travel with us, I can't read any of the other text, partially because I'm old and partially because <laughs> it's really small text. Um, but so I would keep to one set of topography rules and do that the same time every time and develop a consistency in a template. I would try to find a way to add more visual elements that explain, like, for example, college. Maybe you show something like you in front of the college or, you know, something that gives people a reason to believe that you're talking about a college visually. and. Beyond that, maybe try to find a color, shape, or element that tells people this is you. There are emojis in some of these thumbnails, Jeremy. And it, I would say if you're going to use f emojis, fantastic. Just blow them up to a big size. I did a video yesterday, which was nothing but a broken YouTube icon in the middle and then about 12 huge emoji faces surrounding it, talking about the recent um, YouTube stuff that's going on. Uh, and I've had some very polarizing opinions about it. Jeremy thinks it's brilliant. I've had comments on the, ch on the video which say they hate it. But hey, at least it's... I'm at least I'm getting opinions from it and uh, people are noticing that I was doing something a little different in that uh, particular thumbnail. And that's rule number 10. Get weird every so often. There right? you are. Yeah. Jeremy's rule is get weird occasionally. All right. What we're going to do now, folks, is we are going to take some of your thumbnail-tastic questions. I'm just going to stop sharing there for Jeremy. I'm going to switch back to uh, me and you on screen. Uh, so what I want you to do, folks, here, keep these questions about thumbnails only, please. And at the beginning of your question, make sure you include this hashtag question in capital letters. So it makes it easier for us to see the question in the chat and then uh, ask the question. So remember, we're talking about thumbnail only questions and we'd really appreciate your questions so if i just press the right uh, uh transition so yeah it is ask us any questions but ask us any questions on thumbnails specifically okay so tombo you did put in hashtag question but you didn't ans ask an actual question so the first one here we go jeremy sky lover creator is asking why is it called a thumbnail it doesn't look like a thumbnail wow we're getting a historical <laughs> my, question here my Mine just blew. <laughs> like, I'm just going to sit in my room all day and ponder that. We didn't start with the most important question. <laughs> of them all. What is, why is it called a thumbnail? God, I, I haven't really got the answer in the top of my head at the moment. Uh, I think you're going to have to Wikipedia that. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry we can't help with that one. Fascinating question. In fact, Jeremy, you tackle my next question, and I'm going to I'm gonna Google this because I want to find out why it's called all a thumbnail. Right. All right. So... Thumbnail suggestions if you don't like using your face in it. I mean, the hero, If, for example, if you're doing beauty tips or if you're doing um, tech reviews or if you're baking cakes, the hero should always be the thing you're talking about. And then secondarily, I do recommend putting yourself in the background so that people get to know you. Like I said earlier, 
people come to learn or be entertained, but they stay and subscribe because of you. And if you don't put a, your emotional expression and excitement and, and, you know, what makes you human into your channel, then not as many people are going to subscribe. Okay, I have an answer for you here, Jeremy. The term thumbnail was originally used to describe physical images or drawings that were miniature in size. Nice. Boom. We are the knowledge bomb here on vidIQ. Next question we get from iKing RPG. Do my thumbnails have good editing? I don't use my face. We kind of answered that one uh, and we, we haven't seen them. So uh, difficult one to answer that. So we'll move on to the next one. Stylish Bees. One best advice, tip, suggestion for new YouTubers like me. So if we're talking about thumbnails here, I'll give you one and then Jeremy will give you one. When you finish editing your thumbnail, shrink it down to like 10% of the size you've been editing and just look at it and say, does that thumbnail represent everything I was just trying to make? Because that's how every single person is going to see it on YouTube. And Jeremy, your top thumbnail advice for beginners? Yes. If you have any graphic, if you're not a graphic designer, if you have some friends that are graphic designers, help them get you started in this process. And then if you're using text or a picture of yourself or images, make sure that all of your thumbnails follow that template. So you're gonna basically have one look with different text and different images, but it's gonna look the same. That's super important. I guess quick suggestion, and um, please folks do help us out in the chat if you've got any good programs. Uh, what should you be using to create your thumbnails? Well, if you're at the very beginning of it, uh, you can use vidIQ's own custom thumbnail editor just to add emojis or put a bit of text on, uh, take a freeze frame uh, if you're at the very beginning of this journey. But uh, soon enough, you're going to want to gravitate towards something which allows you to spend a dedicated amount of time creating something. Canva is a free tool uh, that allows you to create thumbnails and I think it includes thumbnail templates. Uh, Snagit, for example, is a really good tool for taking screenshots, but it also also allows you to add different elements to imagery. Uh, and then if you're going to eventually get to the high end, you're looking at something like Photoshop, um, which just gives you so much power to do things. That's what we edit our thumbnails on, and I'm sure most of the uh, pros use something similar. Any other suggestions there, Jeremy? Um, or is yeah, that, it's, pretty much, it's pretty much the industry standard, isn't it? It's like yeah. thumbnail or, or Canva is a free online option. I mean, pick um, monkey. There's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, of yeah. It. And GIMP as well, um, which could be options for you. Uh, have we got another question there, Jeremy? Could, yeah, Rob. See? So are you going to add thumbnail audits to your click through rate to for, for vidIQ? So I think the, the, the really frustrating aspect of uh, sometimes the analytics that we get and all third party vendors are at the mercy of this. They, they, they get like YouTube API and that makes certain analytics available. And I asked YouTube this almost a year ago, like when are you going to make clip through rates and, um, and uh, impressions numbers available to us so that we can start using it in our tools. And YouTube haven't made that available to us yet. So as soon as we have that information, uh, we are hopefully going to try and apply it to things like the channel audit because that would be super valuable information to have. And Dr. Stein asks, how do you know a click-through rate through a thumbnail or a title right now today? All oh, right. Okay. So we can share that. Um, I'm just going to show you my screen for a second. So I'm going to go to analytics. Yeah. Let's give you a, a brief two minute tour of uh, click through rate and so on. You have to go to the beta studio because it's only available in that area of YouTube. And then if you go to analytics, this will give you your channel analytics. Reach viewers, the tab at the top, and then there's something down here, which is your impressions and how they lead to watch time. And you get a channel click-through rate here. Ours is currently 6%. So we've been growing, we've been getting higher and higher every month. It was I remember, Jeremy, when we first started doing these live streams, it was down at 2.5%. Yeah. So we've managed to increase our click-through rate by about 250%. When you look at it from that number, it's significant. To get uh, more of a breakdown, you click on the uh, impressions to click-through rate at uh, the top here and then that gives you a breakdown of each day how your click-through rate is something you want to do to check individual videos though is go to overview so we're going back here a little bit there's a top videos box you click on 
Uh, no, hang on. Not on that individual video. You click on the box, which should launch. Or if it, ah, you click on see more, and that launches a whole new page. And then you get these two columns here, which show you the impressions and click through rate for individual videos. And that's where you can find a lot of really useful information. For example, we can quickly see that how to start a gaming channel on YouTube gets a click through rate of 7.5%. Very good for us. But this one about how to get more views and subscribers by not making these mistakes, channel audits. Okay, that's a live stream, so that's only got 3%. But we can very quickly see. Uh, where we are doing very well with our content and where we are. So thanks for the question, Sten, and I hope you found that useful as a quick guide on impressions and click-through rate. Uh, we're going to take two more questions. Uh, we'll take three more questions here, Jeremy. So well, the one I'm going to ask you is, uh, let's see... I don't understand that one. How aren't the thumbnails getting old? Uh, I'm not sure what the context is on that one. Uh, let's see what else have we got. All right, good question here, Jeremy. This one's like the this is like an existential YouTube thumbnail question. How clickbaity should a thumbnail be? It's not clickbait if it's true. So if you can Boom. actually deliver what the message is, so the top places in Mexico to visit, if they really are the top 10 places, then it's not clickbait. Um, where it becomes clickbait is when you're, you know, you're actually BSing your, your way to get someone to click on something. But if you're delivering, it's not clickbait. I 100% agree. The value is determined by the audience. So if a video uh, is doing really well, getting lots of views, and it's because of a thumbnail that is clickbaity in inverted commas it's not clickbaited to the audience and it's not clickbaited to youtube because they've shared it amongst a, a wider audience now there's still going to be variations on this and arguments and people will say well the logan paul brothers have very clickbaity titles but for their audience that is exactly what their audience wants to see and it works for those channels next question jeremy can you uh, have we got another one there sure um Please tell me the perfect resolution size for a thumbnail. So I think, I may be wrong about this, but YouTube thumbnails are only shown at a maximum resolution of 720p, I think. No, it's 1080 now. It's 1080 so it's, now, okay. Yeah, 1920 by 1080, right. 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. There you go. I've, uh, I think the key thing to note is that the maximum of thumbnail size is 2 meg. Uh, and sometimes I have problems making my pictures fit in that size. I've occasionally had to shrink them. In fact, Jeremy, when you sent me that new template, they kept saving uh, in over two megs. So I had to do some little adjustments to stop that. But yeah. And so a, funny, a funny story about how I know that. I was speaking at VidCon a few years ago and the engineer that design, develops the thumbnail stuff was in the audience. And he was like, why are you telling people 720? <laughs> And I was like, oh, so that, that was my that's my funny story. And we'll be back for Jeremy's funny story corner uh, next week. <laughs> One last question then. Somebody asked a really good question. It was about, here we go, the best color for a thumbnail. So my answer to that would be try, now this is very general advice, try to avoid whites and blacks predominantly because when a uh, viewer is viewing on a desktop, they're either in a white um, dis general display or black, and then your thumbnails can quickly blend into the background. But that's not always the case. Sometimes blacks works really well. And in terms of the best color, it's one that differentiates yourself from the rest of your competition so that you stand out. For example, we use uh, blues. I know Daryl Eves likes to use blacks. I know that um, Brian Johnson likes to use sort of a combination of red and orange, and Dean... Um, Brian Dean use, uses green. So it's something to make sure that you stand out from the rest of the crowd. Um, would you agree there, Jeremy? Yeah, it's all. It's not about your thumbnails at the end of the day because when you're on the right-hand side rail and people are selecting, it's actually about how your thumbnails look compared to everyone else's. That's what where the decision is made. Yeah. So your thumbnails, to like if you're not looking at your competitors, you're really not designing thumbnails because most of the time the organic traffic on YouTube comes from suggestions on the right hand side. So you're competing against everyone else. So my biggest suggestion is don't be like them, be different. 
And the final question in our questions section here comes from uh, Cafe Matika. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, we uh, do sometimes take preference on questions when they are a super chat. And this one is, is there a perfect ratio between thumbnail image and text? I think my answer would be text should be, and this is again very general, probably about 20% of relevance. Sometimes in different topics and genres, it can be a huge difference. Or if the text is super important, then it's like almost 80, 90%. Again, it really depends on what you're trying to say and trying to project in your thumbnail. Jeremy, any alternative yeah. thoughts there? It's also about the industry. So if it's like Fortnite, you're not going to see a lot of text. If it's a how-to <clears throat> channel, Nick Nimmin has phenomenal thumbnails and his thumbnails are a lot of text. <clears throat> I really kind of uh, completely opposite of what I teach, but at the same time, Nick Nimmin's thumbnails are extremely effective. So there's always ways and reasons to break these rules. You just have to test and test often. But in general, for most industries, the more text you use, the worse your thumbnails are going to do. Final interesting question. I just want to touch on this. It's from Ashutosh Tiwari. I hope I pronounced your name right there. Can you use GIFs as thumbnails? The answer is no, because on a desktop, when you mouse over a thumbnail now, it kind of shows a little preview of what's in the video, although you can't choose that. But in the community tab, you can use GIFs, or if some people are really screaming at me right now, GIFs. Uh, and that, those can be really effective in your community tab, but you can't use it uh, on a thumbnail. With all that being said, folks, we're going to take one more break and we're going to do a quick fire round of thumbnails. So we'll be back after another brief intermission from our sponsors, which are, guess who? These chaps, back in a moment. If your YouTube channel is stuck in a rut, maybe it's time you gave it the vidIQ boost treatment. Still not convinced? Here's 10 reasons why you should. vidIQ. vidIQ. vidIQ.com. With vidIQ Boost, you have complete access to one of the most powerful marketing tools on YouTube, the channel audit. It will show you in a snapshot what's working on your channel, what isn't working on your channel, and all of those little things like titles, tags, and end screens that you need to fix. We also take the guesswork out of search engine optimization with our keyword suggestion tools. Knowing what people are searching for means you know what to include in your titles, tags, and descriptions, all of which you can add with a single click. With our competitor tracking tool, you can follow up to 20 channels working in the same video space as you. If their content is catching fire, chances are they're doing something right and you need to add your own spin to the topic. One of our Boost exclusive tools is Bulk SEO. This analyzes content you have already published and shows you how people are finding that content and how you can improve it further with keywords you're not even using. Have vidIQ do the work for you by alerting you through email with a list of videos that are trending based on your search criteria. If you see a trend blowing up, it's time to ride that wave for massive channel growth. Want to quickly post videos natively on Facebook rather than YouTube links? Our syndication tool can do that for you in just a few easy clicks. Through subscriber analysis, you can discover what your fans do when they're not watching you. This can help you discover new video topics and channels of interest, as well as understanding when your subscribers are online, so you know the best time to publish your content. Have you ever wanted to know which channels covering similar topics to you are having viral moments, no matter how big or indeed how small the channel is? Our most viewed tool will help you uncover those hidden gems. With vidIQ Boost, you also get vidIQ Pro features as well, which include our titles, tags and descriptions translation tool, as well as the controversial keyword checker, saving you from possible demonetization flags. And while we're on the subject of upgrade banners and locked features and rocket icons you might have seen as a vidIQ free user, with vidIQ Boost, all of this goes away. You have complete access to every single one of our tools. Our support team is available and ready to answer your questions in the supported languages on screen now. Start boosting your channel today and let us educate you on your YouTube journey. 
And we are back. And I'm just seeing in the comments that the real estate whisperer loves the way I say growth. So just for you, YouTube growth. I want to see 100% growth on your channel. I don't know if this is some sort of weird ASMR thing that's going on <laughs> here, but uh, I'm still determined to do a YouTuber edition of uh, ASMR at some point. So yeah, growth would be one of the words that I use on a regular basis. All right, let's get a question. Uh, Ron Budden, let's get the question hashtag thing out of the way. Jeremy, uh, thank you for remaining on the live stream. We're going to do some quick fire audits now, if you are ready. Still focusing on on the uh, topic of thumbnail. So uh, uh, can you see my, no, you can't see my screen, Jeremy. Okay, so I'm just gonna press some buttons here so that Jeremy can see my screen. Uh, please confirm that you can do Jeremy by pressing that button there. Yep. Okay, right then. So the next channel, we're gonna audit, and I'm gonna leave this one completely to Jeremy because I think he's an absolute expert in this. And I don't want to incur the wrath of a channel with 4.7 million subscribers. So uh, Jeremy, uh, please take it away, the expert thief. What is good about these thumbnails that we can see right here? Can you do me a favor and sort by most popular? Yes, I can, sir. All right, so it's interesting to me that two of the top six, seven videos have these arrows. A lot of people, even on like, you know, thumbnail experts disagree with me and say, arrows don't work. And I'm looking at like the top, you know, 10, 15 videos of this channel and almost half, you know, a third of them have these arrows. So Arrows work, and the reason arrows work is intrigue. <clears throat> Our brains like to to know, you know, we want to see what's next. We want to have a mystery. We want to click on something we don't know the answer to. So by developing intrigue, obviously thumbnails work. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand why the Grand Theft Auto Five Thug Life number 62 uh, is doing well. There's ladies and bikinis <laughs> and there's Lamborghinis, right? So appealing, that, to the, appealing to the demographic there, I would say. Exactly. Um, so, you know, for example, the fifth one, the two cars that are orange here, the GTA 5 online car switch, um, you see two cars. You don't know if they're different or not. And there's an arrow over there by the door. So the intrigue is like, what is going on here? If I'm into Grand Theft Auto and the car part of it, you know, like like making cars or whatever, I'm gonna be like, what's going on here? So the intrigue I would say is probably one of the biggest reasons this channel has this many subscribers and this many views. Another thing is consistency. Grand Theft Auto is always in the top right hand corner. Mm -hmm. and uh, with their logo. So it's you can tell it's their video. So already, you know, just looking at this, I would say eight to nine of the 10 principles we have are here. Um, the principles that they don't have, the three E's, don't matter as much because the hero are the cars or the things people are doing within the game. So you can break these rules, right? So the eyes, excitement, and emotion. Now, excitement and emotion are definitely still part of the puzzle. You have to have that. But in this case, the cars being the hero, you don't necessarily need to have a person or eyes all of the time. A couple of final things I would mention here is that most of the most popular videos that we're looking at here are from uh, videos that were like, what, five years ago, four yeah. years ago. So these thumbnail elements were being implemented a long time before the real research and studies and strategies were put together for thumbnails. So I think that's one reason that really helps uh, with the channel. And if we just look at the newest ones, because they've moved on a little bit from Grand Theft Auto as an older video, but it's very similar to Lackland, isn't it? With these like Fortnite ones, even some like with almost very similar signage, but 
the the thumbnails are very simple and very clear. And then look at this one, Jeremy. You, you said it again. This arrow pointing at a helicopter, and then a really intriguing title as well. My longest snipe ever. That's where making something something tiny is actually really effective in the thumbnail. And I think somebody said it here. Uh, whose username I can't say. It's C, but it says good job. Simple is a key here. And I think um, each of these thumbnails are simple in their own right. So yes, I saw you in the chat, expert thief, saying, "Hey, it's me." What we really really love you to do is share this live stream on your community tab because we <laughs> really appreciate that and it might just give us a few more views uh, and the fact that we absolutely love your content and we love your thumbnails big thumbs up uh yeah we're not sucking up or anything there all right we're gonna move on to the next channel uh which is uh home tech you don't have a channel banner, but we're not talking about that today. I think for you, just look at Unbox Therapy and look at how strongly uh, the hero of the thumbnail is in the product. So you, you're using what looks to me maybe still frames or you need it like a bit of lighting or uh, as we talk about in the tips, like a still, a, a prepared still image that really sells the products of the value. Just for an example, this one here, like there's so much wasted space on the thumbnail there like a beige background and like is it something about a nest or a smart of some kind i can barely see any of that in your thumbnail next for, channel for a doing... channel with 65 subscribers though i think you're doing really well oh so jeremy yeah. thank you for pointing out like something positive about the channel and yeah, yeah you and, are and keep, yeah old. keep on going because those thumbnails are pretty darn good for for a small channel but you as right. you get better with your thumbnails you're gonna grow I mean, for example, if we're looking at like uh, improvement, this last one here, I think, is an improvement because there's a bit, a, be a bit of better color contrast. So thank you, Jeremy, there for hauling me in uh, in the quick audits. I'll let you take this one, which is video game Pope. Too much consistency. <laughs> Too much consistency. Which basically it looks like the exact same thumbnail every time. Yeah, and uh, and it. Almost is, isn't it? I like. I like to call this a thumbnail wallpaper, uh, where you're just essentially using the same thing over and over again. And if you use it too much, then a viewer can't distinguish the difference between one video and another. Maybe if they see it in a, if they're just scanning through suggested videos and they see that thumbnail, it's like oh, I've already seen that one without actually reading the title. So yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And I would say, like, I can barely even, I barely even notice the right hand side. Uh, yeah. graphics because the text and the logo is so large i barely even notice the right hand side graphics it, it, i would it, flip that on its head i would have mostly graphics with people and excitement and emotion and the actual logos would be very small lovely stuff next channel uh carter confidential uh new channel 63 subscribers I think it's similar to the vlogging channel that we saw earlier on. Like you're just experimenting with different texts and different styles and they're not quite working just yet, but it's good to see that you're starting to bring in the like fundamentals of a prepared still image, such as this one. We've got an arrow pointing to something, but I think in this one, we just can't really tell what the arrow is pointing to. There's something a little lost in translation there and a the storytelling, but it's good that you're experimenting with this. And the usual problem, inconsistent text, which is difficult to read on a lot of your um, thumbnails and the... It's different every time as well. And anything else there, Jeremy? Other than I would just encourage yeah. most of our listeners to not even use text. Yeah, I so think, it's almost start from the opposite end. Like, yeah, te text is the thing that needs to be learned how to use, rather than assuming that you have to have it in your thumbnails. And go, for example, going back, you know, to even this video that we did the thumbnail for, there are two words, and they're very big and they're easy to read. But I will say, my favorite thumbnail by far is I can't believe who I got NFL signed my mystery photo and there's no text on it because it's intriguing. It's interesting. There's emoji. So I would say for your channel, let's just don't do text, get more emotional and, and have fun. Oh, sorry. I was playing a video. Okay. Uh, next one is twin girl gamers, 20 subscribers. What would we say about this one, Jeremy? consistency 
Yeah. Lack of consistency. A lot of different games here. So NBA, Fortnite, Roblox. Sorry. We have this. This is like the, the weekly Roblox. How do you pronounce <laughs> Roblox um, bit. Uh, <laughs> I've, I'm sure I've changed from last week. So, yeah, lack of consistency. Uh, some of the thumbnails have potential. Like, I like this one. Like, if you could make a really. I like this thumbnail, but it needs to be helped by the title. Uh, like this one is, it, it needs something in the title to, to like say an amazing shot or a uh, last minute winner or something to really help tell the story of that thumbnail. Um, but generally speaking, I, they, yeah, a lot of them feel like still frames from the videos and you experimented with text here in this latest one, but does it work? I'm sure the, the audience will give you an answer to that one. Uh, but yeah, I think generally speaking, you're right there, Jeremy consistency and how can you maybe fit some of your banner elements into your content hey guys my name is ben melling sorry Progress. each of these videos is each of these channels is playing the video first next one then we have ben mellinger looks like a graphic artist or comic uh drawer and i generally like the look of these thumbnails what do you reckon jeremy the, yeah the hero really, is yeah i really is, like is, them is the, the fourth one from the the top you can request a free art commission that's one of my favorite because it's full size. Mm -hmm. um, I would say full size when possible. Um, colored ones are probably going to pop harder. Um, you may even want on these these black and white ones. Unless people are looking for black and white pin or something like that, you may even want to splash some color on them uh, to just make them stand out more. But I think if you use that fourth one from the top as a template, I think you're really well on your way to developing a style of crop for yeah. your for your art. And one thing I would note is on all of your most of your thumbnails, I can see a shadow maybe from the light. So I think just investing in some lighting or working out how you can illuminate your image, your picture without casting those shadows would really help as well. So. Um, just uh, just a little thing there that I've noticed. I King RPG. I think this is another one where it's a question of consistency. It looks as if you're talking a bit about PewDiePie on occasion. Then you got something on the Galaxy S10, and then back to PewDiePie. A, a simple thing. Look at these thumbnails, and if you pick them out and mix them up with other channels, would you be able to pick out yours from that? Maybe these three because they have a little bit of consistency, but the others are very difficult to follow. So I think working on the consistency there first. Anything else from you there, Jeremy? I think you nailed it. Yeah. All right. And Jeremy, if you lead with this one, Rich Kid King Smith. Um, I'm. Gathering my thoughts. Give me a second. So this might be like a motivational channel. Can you scroll down a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So again, I think this is pretty simple. You, every thumbnail looks like a different channel. Yeah. So find a way. I like the black. I am the storm. You know, I like the concept. Don't use a lot of text. I think I am the storm is probably the best example of text you have. Um, Though I don't like the cry of a champion, but I am the storm. Just keep text really simple. The black and white's fine, um, but consistency. You know, if you're going to do black thumbnails, every one of them, you know, black and white. Yes. So keep it consistent. Have a look, and if you look at the top ten or twenty motivational, inspirational YouTube channels. They all are consistent. And this is one of the hardest spaces to get into because they're, they, these guys are some of the best in the world. So just, yeah, just really nail down your consistent look or um, a lot of these motivational channels will eat your lunch. <laughs> and I think as, as we move on to the uh, the, the final uh, channels that we're looking at, I think consistency is, consistency is the one that, thing that's coming up more and more. It's making sure that each of your um, thumbnails have a link between the rest of your content. Uh, with Air Perry, 115 subscribers. Uh, <laughs> I find this, these two thumbnails just humorous because I can't remember what that face is called, but uh, I, I, it pleases me that I see it. But then the other thumbnails are just look to be still frames. And you can tell this a glaringly obvious um, 
the glaringly obvious when a thumbnail hasn't really got the custom treatment is when you see black borders. So you haven't actually created something that fits the dimensions of a thumbnail, which is 16 by 9. So make sure that you fix that. And then again, yeah, the topics that you're doing mean that you're jumping between different uh, types of videos and that influences the thumbnails as well. So is it Fortnite? Is it Amazon Music that you're talking about? Is it technology? You've got to decide and not focus first and then you can really, that can really help hone your uh, thumbnails as well for your channel. Jeremy. Hi. Oh, you want my opinions? No, 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 no. I'm trying to play the right music. No. Oh, that was a terrible ending. Okay, right. So, <laughs> sorry, folks. I thought I had the right music queued up and I did not. But I just want to say thank you, as always, to Jeremy. Uh, can you can you not see my screen anymore? No, I can. There we are. Jeremy's on screen. Yeah, sorry. Sometimes these live streams can be really stressful when you've got to try and press three, three or four buttons at once to get everything back to the way it should be. Uh, and now here we are, folks. If you enjoyed this live stream, I want you to reflect your thoughts in emojis and we're going to do some shout outs for them as we say goodbye. Jeremy, uh, like any final thoughts on summing up what I think has been an awesome session on thumbnails? Take that screenshot you guys made or go back through this video and look at those 10 rules or 10 questions you have to ask yourself and take that sheet or put it on your desktop. And the next time you do a thumbnail, go through all 10. Well, if, what, what I would say actually is I would concentrate on just one of those. So like if it's for the, yeah. ne for the next thumbnail, concentrate on taking a still image and get that right. Because there's, there's a lot of tips there to try and follow. So sorry if I'm uh, stamping over your idea there. Well, I have an idea of if someone takes all 10 tips and they tweet at vidIQ, the oh, yeah. winner will get a free year. Of wow, food. Jeremy here with, with a giveaway. We need to be really careful about doing that actually now on YouTube because we okay. you can get in trouble, but I think that's if you include a link. link. But yeah, if you want to share your thumbnail attempts, uh, do tweet us at vidIQ and we'd love to see them. Uh, but yeah. So as Jeremy says, you've got that screenshot hopefully there. I'll go back through the beginning of this live stream to see what's going on. And we are going to now say some shout outs and some good, some goodbyes. So thank you to one of our, well, two of our moderators, SP Tech Plus and your Real Estate Whisperer. And I think also Leron was moderating earlier on. There's a Russian person here. I think it's the guy who does all of our um, running order. Uh, you're giving us like the peace and the thumbs up. And yeah, we, we're loving that. Thank you very much. Pedaling with Paul. Uh, Ke Kayla, Baylor, The Miller Life, Weird and Wonderful, Skull Gaming, uh, Ash is also there, and Tommy's Lotto Madness, Skill Gamer, Jeremy, the pressure's on now. You've got to do three shout outs flawlessly. I'll All right. Get you to do it again. CW Gaming, Melissa Nugin, Doing Explorer, Panther, Beauty Conclusions. You guys have a great day. Oh, wow, Jeremy, just <laughs> knocking them off there superbly. It has been an honor, as always, folks. If you enjoyed this live stream, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to vidIQ if you haven't already done so, and share this live stream with anybody who you may think it's useful for in terms of video grading. And it just leaves us to do the awkward wave and say enjoy <laughs> the rest of your video making day. We'll be back very soon. Bye for now. I'm still waving. <laughs> still waving because I know YouTube cuts off my live streams early if I don't. All right, now.